All right, so now that we've got a pretty decent setup here, um, we've got uh, common chunking, we can resolve assets, we're loading our uh, CSS through Webpack, everything's going good. Um, now is something that I saved it kind of for last because um, I feel like it is kind of irrelevant to this stuff for, for how CSS fits in with Webpack, but obviously it's something most people are going to use and want to know how to use. So uh, I like SAS. If you like less or something else, then I'm sure there's a Webpack loader for it. However, I'm just going to be going over uh, SAS, but basically it's very easy to incorporate uh, CSS preprocessors into your workflow with Webpack. Uh, as always, we're going to install a couple of things. First is we're going to need Node SAS. Um, that's just to simply run SAS itself. Uh, so go ahead and install that. We'll also, of course, need the SAS loader so that Webpack knows what to do with it. So once you got that done, go back to our loaders as per usual. And just like we did down here with our file loader, right, accepting two different file types, we're gonna have to also do this now. Uh, you, can make, you can make a separate loader if you want. Um, so in other words, if you just want CSS to run through style loader and CSS loader, you can totally do that and make a separate loader for this stuff. Um, that's up to you. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it all as one because uh, if you run a CSS file through the SAS loader, it's totally fine, it's legit. Um, thanks to SCSS, right? And um, there's certainly a better uh, regex, probably more compact one, but I think this is just more readable. So I'm gonna just go with this. So again, it's testing for files with the path of dot and either CSS, SCSS, or SASS for SAS. And again, the dollar sign is for the end of the string. Um, so again, remember the order of loaders is last to first. So we're handing it possibly CSS, SCSS, or SAS files. So we, of course, want to run them through the SAS loader first so that they get uh, compiled into CSS. And then the CSS loader takes it over from there, right? So that's, uh, that's I mean, that's really it to set it up with Webpack. So now let's just go over this real quick. So now I've, um, in my globals uh, file, I have uh, ref uh, renamed it to an SCSS uh, file. And all I did really was um, I created a colors uh, SCSS file, which is basically just these two variables just to show that it is in fact working. And you see, I'm referencing them here in my gradient now, and I'm importing colors at top. And again, this works because this is relative to this path. This is important to note. Remember what I said in the last video about the way files are resolved. If you're going to use a, um, a CSS file from a node module or from some other random directory, uh, remember that you need this guy uh, at the beginning of the path. Um, and you know, just like just like always, you can use uh, aliases. So let's say you made a file just for um, I don't know colors or themes or mix-ins, you can make an alias for that if you so please. Um, okay, and right, so we've got the colors here. And just to show that it's dem it's uh, working with different file types, um, I've refactored the footer into a SAS file. And you can see in all of its uh, empty bracket, no comma glory, that we have the footer here. And uh, side note, WebStorm is awesome. So it does this for me, but just to remember that um, we have to, or you can set it up not to, but I think it's preferable this way. You have to explicitly uh, give the full file name here. So just remember that if you do happen to refactor or change the file name that uh, you will, uh, not in the case of JavaScript since it resolves JavaScript files automatically, but for CSS and stuff, I had to change my globals to as CSS instead of CSS in the import here. Otherwise it won't be able to resolve the file because you can't find it, right? So we're gonna run our process here. Let's just make sure it works. All right, everything was fine. And let's go to 
to our elements here. The page looks fine still. And, uh, oops, sorry, I'm looking at my head. The globals, you see we still get our nice colors there. And again, just to prove that it works, let's go here. I'm gonna change this to two and this to color one. So we should see uh, without a refresh in the page, remember, because we have hot module reloading on, you should see a swap in the colors, bam. So fast, love it. All right, guys, so that's about it for that. Um, I believe after this, it's time to look into some production stuff. Fun.